your I, it sometimes seems like I'm not paying attention, but like as a person who's not that deep, I am always kind of surface, <laughs> surface level keeping note of everything that's going on. Hi, hello. Welcome back. Thank you. And oh my gosh, this has just been fantastic. So thank you all again for doing this with us tonight. I <laughs> where I feel like there's just so much laughter happening all the time. So it's really refreshing. Um, so we've got a few questions that were pre-submitted by y'all out there. Um, so we're going to start with this one. You talked a little bit about the collaborative process with the illustrations, the colors, the panels, etc. This question goes a little further and asks, about the origin story of this partnership. So, Tegan and Sarah, how did you two um, come to choose Tilly as the illustrator for this book? Yeah, why me? <laughs> I mean, I think, I think it really just came down to like the way that you drew your characters, honestly. You know, I can remember Sarah and I pulling a few panels out of something like when, when we'd gotten sort of links to different artists when we clicked on you, there was just, there was something about the way that you drew your characters, it just, it was, it was like seeing the characters in my head actually already on the page, like there was just something about the way that you drew that felt like you would draw little Tegan and Sarah in their world really well. I think also too, like all joking aside, because I know we're hilarious, but we are. Um, you know, I think I think the fear for me in taking our high school story, we had worked really hard to try to tell our high school story in a sophisticated way because we didn't want it to be written off as something that couldn't yeah. be important. And so then to take that story and try to put it into a junior high space, it was important to us that we work with a collaborator who was cerebral, mm -hmm. who was inward thinking, you know, about deep. characters D, not like she. <laughs> because I think if you had looked at my past work, it's like, it's pretty depressing. But, and we loved it. I guess, yeah, I guess we all, we all just sort of like turned off the spigot of our depression and like made it a really positive book. It's actually kind of amazing that we turned off how dark all of us can be. I know. Actually, but there's actually so much beauty in, in the way that you, I mean, I sp there's specific illustrations in this book that they really move me. And, and I think that there's a lot of emotion in the way, like my favorite sections are those sort of like in between chapter moments where the twins are in this sort of like, you know, negative space mm -hmm. uh, and just communicating with each other because it's it's so beautiful. And you, and those all are the dark moments those are your words too. Like all the dark moments too. Yeah. Like yeah. The, when they go get their first bras. Oh yeah, that's just pretty sad. Like a horrific <laughs> experience. I mean, hey, have you ever gotten a first bra? There's so much yeah. melancholy and sadness in it, you know what I mean? I think yeah. that, that the dark side to the way that you draw it is like, it drew us in. I think the collaboration ended up working perfectly because I do, my favorite thing, my favorite part of my job is, is drawing melancholy. But that paired with you two, your personalities, your jokes, like your history, it just like, the comedy, we didn't know if the combination would work, but it, it did just work. Which is why we have to do another one. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, this is a question that applies to all three of you. Do you feel like being a twin has affected the way you view the world, the world, and if so, how? I mean, one of the things I love that you said very early on was that you you recognize the difference between like our twinness and your twinness. Like, yeah, because I'm a fraternal twin, yeah. and I also have an older brother, so I very clearly saw the difference between a standard sibling relationship and a twin relationship, but for you guys, your only reference point was each other, so I think that's a really different dynamic. Yeah, and I feel like you you described it too, like it's that, that there, there is just this sort of intrinsic connection that twins have, and that even in your fraternal like mm -hmm. sibling relationship, even though you know, it's not a, a sister, it's a brother, like that you still felt a closeness and an attachment and a sadness when you were apart from each other. And I think, yeah, like I, I know for myself, like I felt like that really made me feel really seen. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it's funny because we didn't have that conversation before you drew the book, but I can see that in the way you drew us, in the way that you explored our relationship with each other. Just like, like Sarah's getting at it in the interstitials, the way that 
you drew us communicating with each other. Like we joked a few weeks ago that you basically are like the th another therapist for us. Like, <laughs> like when they're talking to each other, it's like you're inserting emotion and feelings and we don't really talk about emotion and feelings. We just, mm. I talk about it. I just don't feel like, <laughs> you're, yeah, it doesn't really <laughs> like that. <laughs> bounces off her, you know? No, but I, one thing that is so interesting to me about fraternal twins, mm -hmm. and specifically boy-girl twins, yeah. I'm married to a boy-girl twin, not both, both of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are demented. No, I, I'm just married to one of them, but, um... We got her. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the difference for me, with, like, Stacy is also only a twin, like, doesn't have other siblings. Yeah. And, you know, she, we there's so much about being twins that has really impacted the way that we see the world, especially developmentally, like, to grow up with somebody who's in the same grade as you and is sort of, like, hitting milestones or not hitting milestones at the same yeah. time as you is really specific. But I think the added complication for me and Tegan in being identical twins and growing up the way that we did is that... Um, the way that even just like externally people confuse us, mix us up, you know, make us sort of one thing. I think it's impossible for us not to do that too. You know, she's like literally walking around with my face. And, you know, and I, and I don't want to, I, I, I think it's important not to underestimate how distorting it is to your, your psyche and yourself when people don't know who you are. Like, yeah. you know, it's... I've been really coming to terms with this, you know, in adult, like later adulthood where, you know, we sort of play it off as a joke, like when people will say, um, oh, you know, okay, you're Sarah, you're Tegan, I'm going to definitely mix it up. Like imagine when that happens to you, like when people mistake your name in real life or, you know, get something wrong about you and it, it, it can be like off-putting or like, you know, or it's a little disorienting or maybe it makes you feel a little bit insecure. But that happens to us like just a, an infinite number of times in our life and so I think you know, in some ways, it's also a burden. It's, it's, yeah. it's kind of this confusing thing that we've sort of carried with us. And I think, um, you know, even to get more existential about it, I think even as a young kid, because I'm very deep and deep as not, I, I remember understanding the gravity of our dynamic and our relationship in this way that was very heavy for me. I just remember feeling like... You couldn't escape it. I could never escape it. I would never escape it. I remember the first time I had the thought, like, you know, even... Even if one of us dies, I remember thinking like, oh my god. There was that funeral picture. I know, yeah. It's like, I just remember thinking like, oh my god, like, it's just different. Like, you know, if one of us dies, it's like, we will always be sort of representing the other one physically in this world. Mm. And, yeah, it's heavy, man. Okay, so, that's why I laugh a bit. Bring your kids, it's an all-ages book event. It's an all-ages book. It's fun for everyone. About the twin, about twins being main characters, yeah. because I think we're all used to being like the punchline of a joke yeah. or like just like off to the side. Similar with queerness, so it's like not only are twins center stage in this book, like queerness is center stage. So it's I don't know, it's really exciting. We talk about twins' rights every now and then. Hell yeah, we do. <laughs> we do. Yeah, that's right. Liberation for twins. <laughs> Woo! Thank you for saying that. I'm truly courageous. Um, so we. This is for you, which characters from On a Sunbeam would listen to Tegan and Sarah? Oh my God, can I remember the characters from my own book? Oh Jesus! Um, I mean, it's a universe of entirely female and queer people. There's no men, like everyone. It would be like the the national anthem. So I'm gonna, and that's my way also of getting out of saying it. No, there, there would definitely be one character who was like, they don't represent me. I mean, the main character is named Mia. And I know that. When you write a lot of graphic novels, you don't have time to go back and read them after you finish them. So it's been a minute. Yeah. Yeah, we'll take it. Thank Good you. question. <laughs> I love the creativity. Yeah. Um, let's see. Okay, here's a really lovely one. What 90s teenage wisdom would you share with the LGBTQ kiddos today? Wow. I mean, I think... I can't remember because we've been talking all day, so I don't remember if it's already been said, or Sarah said it earlier, but she said something about, um, no, I think it was, yeah, it was like an hour ago here on this stage. <laughs> <laughs> you can just say it again. You can say it again. No one cares. Go ahead. Just, you know, take me and quote me in your new answer. <laughs> I don't Sarah quote every 
everyone. She's quoting from me. Um, I think that there was, we had time when we were teenagers. It was hard. I'm not saying that it was better or not. I'm not a teenager, so I don't know what it would be like to be questioning or grappling with identity now. But I know that you continue to grapple and question as you grow and you get older. It doesn't stop. Every year, there's new things I'm trying to figure out about myself. And I think that my advice to, to myself back then and my advice as somebody who grew up in the 90s to someone now is that you just have to make time and, patient, and have patience for yourself. You know, I think, you know, it's something we talk about all the time, but there's all this, there's so much significance in coming out. But what they don't tell you is you're gonna come out millions of times because every time you get in the back of a lift or every time you sit down on an airplane next to a stranger or every time you are in the supermarket and someone looks at you a certain way and then gets into a conversation with you and then asks you any personal questions. Is that happening a lot for you in supermarkets? Yeah, an opportunity is gonna come for you to reveal things about yourself and it's just like, yeah, just dozens and dozens and dozens of times a week I come out and it's, it's just be patient. And I just think that's that just is across all generations is that identity changes and evolves and, and you just have to be really kind to yourself because it's always gonna have a tinge of weirdness, but you're gonna get better at it. Especially in the fruits and vegetable. <laughs> I'm gonna stab her right here on the stage. <laughs> that was Thank you. Super shallow here. stuff in Boston tomorrow. <laughs> super, super shallow stuff. That's a good question. Anything else to add? I don't know your advice, Tilly. I mean, you're on the From 2007. Well, you're on the precipice of becoming a parent, too. Like, you know, I think... Well, and now I have to come out because they want to, like, talk about the baby, which, like, very quickly leads to, like, oh, and dad! And it's like, then they're like, oh, like, a gay pregnant mom. Yeah. <laughs> That's possible. That's possible. And then sometimes people ask, like, how'd you do that? did have, like, I got an iPhone in middle school, but we had such a different relationship to devices because I kept losing it. I didn't know it was important yet. No one knew it was important. I thought the biggest decision you could make about your iPhone was picking up home screen image. Like, I really, I'm, and so for me, what I wish I could give to queer kids now is a chance to disconnect um, and focus on what their image is without a picture of it, because I think that like self-image amongst queer kids is is always really complex, especially if you're um, dealing with like trying to figure out how you want to look. Um, I don't know. I think that's really sweet. Yeah, I'll burn. I'll burn your iPhone for you. All right, I think we have time for one more, so I'm gonna kind of clump two into one. Um, these questions are, what song epitomizes your junior high experience, and then what's your favorite memory of junior high? Well, this is it for me, because I posted um, an a, a Instagram story earlier today, and I put Stay by Shakespeare's sister on, and that was like, be a song in seventh grade. And I feel like when I hear that song, I'm immediately in our best friend, who loosely in the book, Noah is sort of based on our best friend in junior high and like immediately in her basement watching the video on her like wood panel television. You know, her older sister was such a babe and like <laughs> just spent all night watching music videos with our best friend waiting for her sister to come home and she would just <laughs> fucking blow down the stairs and pass us like so fast she was just like whoosh and we were all like <laughs> and I don't know why there bedroom door was like a dungeon door. <laughs> and oh. I've unpacked that. <laughs> yeah. I know. And so the dungeon door would slam and then we'd just go back to watching music videos, but I can like picture almost every single moment of that music video. Stay. Stay. the melody. It's okay. I know all of you are feeling bad for me. I'm not sad. Sarah's so realized it actually takes 60%. It's fine. It's learning around for 25 years, but. Okay, one of us owns two houses. <laughs> well, when I'm destitute, guess whose guest house I'll be living in? Mom. Mom will be long gone. Um, guys, it's your house. She's, Mom's not gonna live to be 150. Okay. Um, today, my fashion mom. 
pumpkins, which I wrote a lot about actually in our memoir high school. But I, uh, there was a boy in grade eight. That's very early 90s. I'm reading here, that's a good one. Okay, so, silence, Sarah's feeding. I just want to say, we were talking about signs earlier, and Tilly asked us what sign we were, and we said Virgo, and then she's pregnant, and we were talking about what sign your baby might be, and you said, I really don't want it to be born early because then it'll be a Virgo. <laughs> but it was after we'd already told you that we were Virgos. And then you, and then you said, is it okay if I say what you said? Go for it. Okay, you, you said that you're having a boy, and then you were like, men who are Virgos are mad slaters, and I was like, we are mad <laughs> Like, like just recently, a friend told me they were like he he was like when you drink you really turn into a manslayer like it's like it's a thing. Anyways, today by smashing pumpkins and it changed my life. Um, a very cute skater boy in grade eight who all the girls in grade seven were in love with. He decided he liked me, and because obviously I was a. Just guess. <laughs> just guess. It was a big deal because that, it was complex for me. On one hand, I was like, I felt really excited that, and I really, he was so cute and he dressed great. And I really was like into him, but like, I think I wanted to be him. And also, you know, getting attention from cute boys with like cultural, social currency meant that all the mean girls were gonna yeah. be mean to me. They weren't mean to him, they weren't like, you son of a bitch. They were, like, they were like, how dare you like Sarah? They were like, he only likes you because of this or because of that, you know, all the mean things girls say. But um, I just pushed forward and I still became friends with him and he gave me Siamese Dream. And he, he told us to listen to song number three, which was today. And we went home and we played, the, we played song number three. We played today on Bruce's stereo. And it's like my whole life changed. I just felt like, it was like I was hearing music from another planet. And I just, re I just remember thinking like, this is everything to me. This is the best song I've ever heard. It's, this is gonna, ch this is like all I wanna know. I wanna understand everything about this the story, the voice, the everything. It just ch totally changed my life. And Jason was just like such a nice guy. And we never went out, although he did get me, a, he bought me a candy gram. Remember that? <gasps> I remember those. He bought me a candy gram. Those were a big deal. It was a huge pain in the ass for me because, you know, they're like, Sarah. And I went up and I got it and all the mean girls were like, who's it from? And I was like, you know who it's from. It's from Jason. And then they were really mad at me. And I threw it in the garbage to show them that he meant nothing to me. <laughs> I would have taken any of those mean girls over Jason. Oh my god. Oh my god. Well, first, I feel like I should say I will love my son if he's a Virgo. Obviously. But technically, if he is on time, he will be a Libra. And I just don't think it's birth early. That's what I'm just going to say for now. Libras are great. Libras, Libras are great. And a Virgo would be great. He can hear me. So I need to be careful. Um, so my. Uh, it was a favorite song from junior high. Or the song that epitomizes oh, your, your junior high experience. I, I'll say this just because I think it's a little bit embarrassing, but my twin brother and I got aggressively into the musical Rent. Yes! <laughs> John and I learned every single word. He bought the, my twin brother's also a musician, he plays piano, and he would play every song and we would sing every word together. Oh, that's so sweet. And it was, like, no, it was just, it was, and I still know every word. Every word, even the interludes where they're just like on the phone and it's the answering machine, I know it. Yeah! But then my favorite memory from middle school, so I was at this tiny school, there were only 10 girls in our grade, and they decided that we would take a class trip um, and uh, two teachers, or it was really just one teacher and a parent, took us ten girls to Utah. Seems super random. We lived in what? Texas. What? Wait, don't worry. You're gonna understand why. I'm what is your gasping now? <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's so we were told we were going to Moab, Utah, and it was just presented us as fact. That's where you're going. We all get there. We like they drive us in this van to this really random hotel. 
We get out of the car, and my English teacher, Miss Ramberg, um, who is in spinning, um, she turns to me and she says, I wanted to go back to this hotel. I, my girlfriend and I came here. Come on. What? And I was like, no. what? Adults can be gay? <laughs> She was older, she was married to a man, but she was she was queer. Um, even though she was married to a guy, she had had a long-term relationship with a woman, and this was the hotel where they had stayed. That's and a she weird wanted field to go trip. back. <laughs> so, honestly, it, and it was beautiful. The hotel it was is beautiful. It, it was a beautiful. <laughs> Republican party's gonna start banning field trips. <laughs> no, 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 you're right. More teachers should go on field trips to places where they have relationships <laughs> with their children. Everyone's a grown up. She was a grown up. God only knows. I mean, for you, how old were you? I was 13. 12. That's amazing. 12, 13. That's amazing. It was so cool. And it was really cool to see an adult be wistful because I was like, I'm the wistful one in the room. No, that's amazing. But adults too? Adults too. What was the hotel like? It was so bland. But it was surrounded by canyons. Cool. And I still remember what it looks like. I mean, look, I think most queers have some story of like a teacher or somebody who's a little bit older like revealing and it can be it, it is it's like seeing a beacon in the dark you know yeah it's, it's like really exciting which is why it's so amazing to have the opportunity to do things like we do like you know my yeah. books make records be on, tele on television national television twice today talking about being gay it's like really important it's still really tough to be different mm -hmm. and it's just it's thrilling that we get to make a living out of telling our stories and it was just an honor to collaborate with you and with you to have be here in the space with all of you and get to hear amazing that is an incredible i can't wait to go backstage and talk more about that story. <laughs> yeah i have more to say the it's teacher amazing. and i are friends now it's so cool we're like dear friends i can text her right now after this be like guess what i told everyone <laughs> like the plot of Carol a little I bit. <laughs> but aren't, isn't every queer but life she, like the plot of Carol? But she didn't lose her children after the vacation to Utah, right? <laughs> no. Okay, okay. No, she didn't. Oh. This is cool. This is really cool. Moab is going to be the next one. We're going to add more. It's weird that the story came up. <laughs> well, thank you all so much for doing this with us tonight. Shout out our team who's sitting in the front row. I I cannot tell you. I mean, I, only speaking for me and T. And you know, we've been doing this for almost 25 years. And making art, making anything, and putting it out into the world is just it's it's so sensitive and it's so intense. And I can tell you that working on junior high has been one of the best experiences that we've ever had. We are so supported. You know, even in finding you, Tilly, like. You guys have all been with us every step of the way. We're delighted about a new project we have with you guys. I just, I feel so grateful and so lucky to have the support of the people that we do. We wouldn't be able to tell these stories without you guys. So I really hope you know just like how, just you guys are amazing. And I don't mean to like compare you to other people we've worked with, but like I think you're our favorite team. <laughs> <laughs> you're so amazing. Thank you again. Thank you to everyone who filled up this whole room. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we have a bunch of signed copies available for purchase of junior high, high school, spinning on a sunbeam, and also the wonderful picture book. My parents won't stop talking. Um, there are yeah, there are some booksellers in the crowd, and we can all attest to how much we love all of Tilly's books. So you should definitely pick those up too on your way out. Um, they are all set up at a table by the exit. So make sure you head that way if you want to buy some more books. Otherwise, I think that's it. Congratulations. Uh,